Chained in Silence is a work of American history about the post-Civil War American South by history professor Talitha L. Lufluria. Beginning her analysis in 1868, when Georgia began to capitalize on its large African-American prison population by leasing prisoners to corporations, Lufluria contends that the country's indentured servitude long outlived its legal abolition of slavery. Lufluria focuses particularly on the many women who, exploited by this system, joined men to work in factories and camps that enriched their white private investors. Lufluria draws from a wide range of primary and secondary sources to reconstruct this point in history, recounting the conditions of the prison system in Georgia, as well as the forms of work prisoners were subject to. The book has been acclaimed for exposing the underrepresented stories of the black women who comprised a central part of the New South. Lufluria centers her book on the thesis that the modernization of the South was achieved on the backs of exploited African Americans, through the slavery loopholes of the convict lease and the chain gang system. This system failed to enrich the black women, or men, who were thrown into it, leaving them with skill sets that made them useful at the cost of eroding their basic rights and dignities. In 1865, after the passage of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which abolished the most obvious form of slavery, white businessmen strove to find ways to continue exploiting freed slaves for massive amounts of free labor. Lufluria rejects the theory of a neo-slavery, which posits that convict leasing was essentially a return to slavery's original forms of bondage. Rather, she views the labor of prisoners, and the labor of people bound in other ways to white-dominated industries, as forms of living closer to sharecropping and serfdom. These systems enslaved women in Georgia and many other southern states from 1868 until at least 1908. During this span of time, about 2,000 black prisoners, male and female, were rented out annually to iron manufacturing, brick-making, and coal mining plants. In her historical analysis, Lufluria uses the concept of a Negro criminality, by which she means the systematic criminalization enslavement process of black bodies, without any due process of law. She argues that this process was reinforced by gendered and racialized violence, including rape and severe physical abuse, implemented by the American prison system to ensure the social control of African Americans. She examines several of the most infamous camps, including Old Town Plantation, Camp Hidmont, and Smithsonian. She points to many pieces of evidence that the African Americans in these camps suffered terrible living conditions and sexual abuse, as well as to ways in which they tried to resist their subjugation. Lufluria closes her book with an examination of the years following the end of the convict lease system in 1908. The outlawing of the practice led to an even worse form of exploitation, the chain gang system. In this system, prisoners were literally chained together and put on humiliating hard labor projects. The chains were ostensibly to prevent their escape, but also symbolized very painfully how slavery persisted long past its abolition. Lufluria argues for a re-examination of convict labor studies with an emphasis on the roles that gender played, in the hope of constructing a more accurate and capacious picture of the wake of the Civil War. It is also a rebuke of the predominant historical narrative that slavery ended with the 13th Amendment and a chilling reminder that history can be used to conceal, as well as to expose, the injustice of the past. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.